things my way, sure, I get rid of them with this 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. Just squeeze the trigger, blow them away. Gee, that's pretty tough, Harry. But there's easier ways of getting rid of piles these days. <laughs> Yes, fat man. <laughs> Excellent. Good shooting, my friend. Now, you will be wanting your reward. You can have anything you like from the top of the shelf. Hello again. And coming up next on Naked Video... Mrs. Thatcher formally inaugurates work on the new Channel Tunnel. <laughs> and page three model Samantha Fox was given a special guard of honour when she arrived at Geneva Airport today. <laughs> And we ask why the Foreign Office is getting so concerned about foreign diplomats who abuse Britain's parking laws. We have film of today's charity football match where David Owen reaffirmed the SDP's commitment to the feminist movement by refusing to wear a bra. <laughs> Back home now, and on a visit to Britain, President Kaunda gets his first taste of alcohol-free lager. <laughs> then it's tragedy on the ski slopes, the day hell-raising film star Oliver Reed dropped his picnic. <laughs> we'll be bringing you all that and more, but first... Right. Now, let's see. Last week, you beat up an old-age pensioner, got a 13-year-old schoolgirl pregnant, and attempted to kiss the landlord of your local, sparking off a pub brawl that left 20 people dead and a further 68 in hospital. I'm warning you, if you don't clean up your private life, I'll have you written out the series. <laughs> Bloody acid rain. <laughs> Fat Mail proudly presents the unforgettable melodies of 40 whistling grades. Remember, I see you, but I'm going to keep ignoring you. I know you, but I'm going to avoid talking to you. I had it off last night, and I'm feeling pretty chuffed with myself. <laughs> the all-time favorite. I'm in the toilet and there isn't a snib on the door. <laughs> yes, 
They're all on party whistling grades. Yeah, well, we recorded the album in Montserrat and remixed it in Paris, New York, and uh, we did the master tape in, uh, in Los Angeles, yeah. Front cover photographs, they were done in Antigua, and the promo video was shot in Hawaii in Sri Lanka. Yeah, it cost a lot of money, yeah. Basically, it's a concept album about life on the dole. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Mr Nesbitt. If you've spent your gyro, that's your affair. We really can't issue with another one, just like that. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Oh, well, that, 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 that's, that's it then, eh? <laughs> oh, well, that's it then. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> right. See you, by the way. Not you. Because who else am I looking at? You. <laughs> See you. And, and, and people like you. You sit there with your hair cutting your all levels and you tell me, you tell me, don't you, don't you tell me there you are. Wine, is it? Wine. Don't you wine me, pal, don't you wine me. Cos I don't, I don't, I don't drink wine there you are. I don't drink wine. Ah, well, fair enough, fair enough. Maybe I'll take, maybe I'll take a wee slug noon again, a wee drink. And maybe I'll fall down and maybe I'll stone back up again and maybe I'll chip some bastard. <laughs> But I mean, that's, that's just me, that's just me. Who, who am I harming? Who am I harming, eh? I certainly maybe the wife, maybe the wife. But then, then she's half dead anyway. There you are. So don't you sit there and gyro me, gyro this. Gyro. I don't want your gyro. I you, 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 wouldn't touch your gyro. You can stuff your gyro. There you are. I tell you, you sit there with your sign this nose button and don't break the pens and see, see, see me, see you, see from you on. I will take the blows, Fred. I will take the blows and I will do it my way. And my way. There you are. So you can, you can stuff it a lot. He's a wank. I want nothing me to do. He's a wank. Nothing for you. Nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Could you see your light clear to let him a 23 pence for my best pair of hair? <laughs> I fought for people at home. I lost, but... <laughs> <laughs> For this job, I can offer you handguns, shotguns, tear gas, CS gas, and rubber bullets. I can even get you a water cannon if you like. Or, of course, you can stick to your old truncheons. It's entirely up to you. I think we'll stick with the truncheon, Sarge. It is traditional. Yeah, I'll go with it. We don't need any fancy stuff. Right, lads. Off you go, then. Cheers, Cheers Sarge. Sarge. Winston, wake up! What is it, woman? Hey, why you gonna wake me, woman? I can hear somebody downstairs. It's the noise of the riots. Now go to sleep. The dino riots. There's somebody downstairs. I'll go check, Jasmine. You see anything, Winston? It's burglars. Oh, thank God. I thought it was the police. <laughs> well, prison overcrowding is a problem, but not here. It's not that bad. Only free to a cell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was a founder member of our neighbourhood watch scheme. Some concerned friends and I got together every night between midnight and 6am and patrolled the streets to make sure there was no trouble, no suspicious characters. No opportunities for suburban criminal types, but I had to give it up. And why was that, Mr. Green? Because while I was out, my house kept getting broken into. <laughs> Andy Watson is serving a ten-year sentence for armed robbery and attempted murder. Andy, or Mad Dog, as he's known to his friends, had a long line of previous convictions and has always maintained that the evidence of five independent eyewitnesses unduly prejudiced the jury during his trial. His appeal was turned down, but now rough justice 
has unearthed startling new evidence which proves conclusively that Andy Watson is in prison for a crime he almost certainly didn't commit. Mrs Janice Watson, Andy's mother, could your son have committed this crime? No, our mad dog could never have done nothing like that. No, no, he's a good boy. Very kind and polite. Always very nice to complete strangers. Very good boy. Always very good to me and his dad as well. And his sisters. Loves animals as well. He's got a little dog and he's lovely to it. Amazing, isn't it? that the police never thought to interview Mrs. Watson to get that story, <laughs> which would have blown the prosecution case apart. <laughs> now that's rough justice. <laughs> Hello. Chad Dwell here. I went out with Sean Jenkins on Tuesday. There's a blind date, so I didn't know what she looked like. <laughs> Still don't, because she didn't turn up. <laughs> Anyway, when Mrs. Greeley next door heard about that, she said, Shadwell, why did you go out with my niece? You like her? Her name's Gravel. <laughs> well, I can imagine how I felt. <laughs> Afraid. Because <laughs> Gravel's a bit older than me and, and a bit bigger as well. And that night, that night I dreamt about her. And, you know, I fainted in my sleep. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, Friday come round and I thought I'd better look a bit modern now. And apparently the 60s look is coming back. Mind, I was only a little boy then, so I thought, I'll wear a pair of short trousers. <laughs> and Gravel turned up and she said, Well, Shadell, I feel like a bit of high rolling tonight. Let's go to the club Spunkin. Spunkin' a go-go. <laughs> so in we went, and the first thing was, Gravel wanted a drink. So I went up to the bra, and the man said, What's it going to be then? And I said, because there were two of us, I said, a double, please. <laughs> double what? Double beer. No, he said, we don't do that. What do you want to drink? So I pointed at something and he said, that's an ornament. <laughs> so I said, well, what can I have for a pound? And, and Gravel drank it all up. And then she said, come on, Shadwell, I feel like a bit of dancing. Let's bogey. <laughs> well, I wasn't quite sure what to do with the dancing. So every time a new record come on, I jumped as high as I could. But I had to stop after a little while because somebody was sick in the hood of my anra. <laughs> so he sat down and then Gravel started doing what she calls serious drinking. And after, after a couple of hours of that, she started to breathe quite heavily. And she leaned over and she said, Shadwell, you don't think I've got a moustache, do you? <laughs> so I said, no. But I think you'd look nice if you did that one. <laughs> and then, then she kissed me. Oh, it was like... It is like somebody driving a hovercraft over my face. <laughs> One of my fillings was sucked out. <laughs> and her hands, her hands were everywhere. I noticed them in somebody else's handbag. Yeah, your luck's not off in tonight, Kev. You what? That Greek goozer in the corner. It's not off, giving you the eye. <laughs> It's all right, darling. It's over now. It's all over. <laughs> I was at a party the other night and somebody offered me another drink. I was just about to accept when I said to myself, Frank, think before you drink. So I thought about it. And then I said, make it a double. <laughs> Clever little devices these, aren't they? No, they really keep your hands with them. Oh, look out, here comes that drunk chappy again. Enough, you rough this morning. My head was split and I felt dizzy. My stomach was turning cartwheels. Still, what do you expect? 
serves me right for not having a drink last night. <laughs> Great Uncle Albert, I bet he'd love to get his hands on it. Trouble is, he can't find it these days. <laughs> but what about Vanessa? Bold, forthright, alluring. She's got everything. And she's going to give it to them if they're not careful. <laughs> oh, then there's Julian. Dear, sweet, lovable Julian. God, what a pillock he is. <laughs> no, none of them. Because as usual, I'm having it. <laughs> well, well. The famous, or should I say infamous, James Bond. At your service, should I hope. <laughs> Drink? Yes, I'll have a... Martini? I'm impressed. I believe you like it shaken. Yes, but let's have a drink first. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Bond. Please. All my lovers call me James. But I've never been your lover. I hope to rectify that right now. No, please. No? No, I can't. <clears throat> it's the wrong time of the month. <laughs> what? It's the wrong time of the month. What do you mean? It's never the wrong time of the month for Bond girls. Bond. You're obviously lying. This never happens to James Bond. Well, it's happened now. Anyway, I don't want to be your lover. Playing hard to get, eh? No, I just don't fancy you. What do you mean? Every woman fancies James Bond. Well, I don't. So, in other words, you're a lesbian. No, I'm not. I just think you're too old. Don't you watch television? Don't you go to the movies? Young girls are always getting off with old, uh, mature men. Well, I prefer someone my own age. So, you prefer boys to men? Listen, honey, my gun's still cocked and loaded. You can do anything with, anything with me you can do with a man half my age. Well, except run your fingers through my hair. Listen, miss, what's your name anyway? Agnes Brown. Agnes Brown. That's not good. Bond girls always have names like Lay It On Me, Tickle My Fancy, and Goldfinger. There was Pushy Galore. Well, there's none here tonight. You know, I've had hundreds of lovers, and you're to be special. You're to be number one thousand. You've really had hundreds of lovers? Well, not hundreds, not literally. More like, uh, well, none. None. Why? Well, you never get anything explicit in James Bond films. All I, I ever give them is a, a kiss when I arrive, a, a wash crack when I leave, and shot all in between. <laughs> anyway, I'll be going now. Oh, Mr. Bond, I misjudged you. I thought you were an arrogant, insensitive man who simply used women for your own ends. But I was wrong. You're just a pathetic old Burke who can't get his oats. <laughs> Dreams, is it? What do I dream about? What do all women dream about? A better world, of course. Where misery and hunger have been abolished. For men can't get their hands in your family allowance book. <laughs> <laughs> where a woman can speak her mind freely without waking up two years later in a glucose strip with concussion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I dream about Blake Carrington, about going to bed with Blake Carrington. Oh, he's a gentleman, so he is. Not like my man. 
I can't see Big Blake breaking one, then forcing your head under the blankets to smell. <laughs> clothes as well, oh I. I dream about clothes. I can just see me stoting about in a ball gown like Lady Di, <laughs> making heads turn at the Bard Wives Hostel. <laughs> Steady reeking of chip fat and cow and gate, oh that'd be pure magic, so it would. And I dream about money as well. No dirty great big piles of the stuff, no nothing, no, no, no. Just enough to be comfortable. Enough to stack a room with regal king size and after eats. <laughs> and maybe enough left over to get his kidneys removed. <laughs> but what's the point in dreaming, eh? This is just lousy, stinking life and you're stuck with it. Miracles never happen. <laughs> So why don't you just piss off with your boxy glass slipper? <laughs> and you know where you can shove that magic wand? <laughs> then was the First World War. Before the second one. Correct. <laughs> Who played the saint? An actor. Great. Uh. What is a sand show? Um, um. How the hell should I know? <laughs> now available, trivial pursuit, morons in this room. <laughs> For a blue wedge question. Who was the Babylonian emperor who had a big hit with a song about scoring 112 runs not out during a hung parliament set in a popular 1950s soap opera starring an actor who was later to become famous as a politician in a film whose soundtrack was based on a well known popular 18th century requiem? Burning issues on the fire is hot. 